Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thanks so much for watching us on Hilal. Uh, and it is the coverage of the ICJ case uh, that South Africa's legal team has put forward and the post analysis. But around that, there are various issues that still plague our communities that uh, seem to have us a bit of a head scratching moment uh, with regards to why these things unfolding as well. And uh, recently, there were flags that were painted on buildings in Cape Town, in one building. Um, the uh, city of Cape Town uh, went through and painted over that mural and that flag. To discuss more about why this is all happening and the impact that it has on our communities, uh, an activist and National uh, Coloured Congress councillor in the city of Cape Town, uh, Brother Hanif Lunat. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Lukman, and greetings to my fellow viewers of. Hilal TV. Jazakallah so much. Always a pleasure having you in the studio. You've been an activist for many, many years. You've been a stalwart in our communities as well. And uh, a person that we all know um, to be on the side of justice and uh, on our co- for our communities as well. So Jazakallah so much. Once again, it's I always want to say yeah. that. And, and it's always heartwarming to have somebody like yourself in the studio. However, there's always things that come up. City of Cape Town has uh, been in hot water uh, over the last couple of years and still in hot water because of the various activities that they've uh, partaken. The recent one is where um, the public of Cape Town are very passionate about uh, the struggle of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. So what they've done is they've created murals on the walls and they've gone and painted a beautiful, in the Boerkarp area, you see a whole flat, uh, a block of flats that's painted. Uh, various uh, parts as well. And I think it was in the Lavender Hill area where a a mural was painted on the side of a flat or block of flats. The city of Cape Town then went and painted over. How did this all unfold? Somebody some time ago decided that they needed to start making the Palestinian flag as a mural in the Western Cape and and obviously blow Mm -hmm. all over the show. And somebody else went one higher and we got the massive one done in, in Boerkup, Boer mm-hmm. of which we now intending to do the next building. Inshallah. Inshallah, by next week we should Inshallah. start with that one. Uh, defying the uh, bylaw mm-hmm. that was passed last month by our city of Cape Town, where five parties objected to it. Okay. Uh, if I could name the parties, you EFF, the ANC, Good, Al Jama, and NCC. Okay, and what was, they, what was their reason for, for doing that? It was clear. Yeah. It was clear they could see that the Palestinian issue was becoming a huge headache. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking into account uh, the policies they have to uh, follow. Right. They are pro-Israel. Uh, they've now relaxed the policies okay. because of the election that comes up in okay. tw- uh, 2024. Mm-hmm. And you'll see that they're now speaking a different language. Okay. So the mural was painted, as we see on the on the uh, screen as well. That was in the Lavender Hill Lavender area. Hill. Beautiful. I mean, people took their time and all of that. And there we find the city then coming through and painting over that mural. Right. Do they, are, are they justified in doing that? Morally, not justified. Okay. Legally, constitutionally, they have the right to do that. It's their property. Oh, the, the, the They own the, uh, the flats. Not all flats. The one in the Boer Cup, mm. many of those flats are being privately Sectionally owned, titled. sectionally titled gotcha. projects, okay. where certain flats are still owned by them, right. where a rental has been paid, okay. but they're in a minority. Right. But in this case, the, the whole unit, block. the entire block is okay. a property. But let's be fair. Let's look at that block of flats. You, you, you can see it hasn't been painted in a long time. Never. That's the upkeep of that. And you can see what our communities and the condition our communities are. Am, am I, am I being harsh I there or am I telling no, you? No, you haven't been harsh. You've been, I mean, that's all there. You okay. can see it. Now, another uh, question that um, people in the Cape are very upset about is that uh, a large amount of our community walls, public spaces have graffiti on it. The city has done absolute nothing to paint over that graffiti and some of it in in some instances quite crude and you know you get various gangs that uh tag uh that's the word i think we use Mm. these days tag Mm. their signs onto uh walls as well but the city's done nothing to paint over that so chat to us about yeah look man we don't have a problem with certain graffiti there are some good graffiti that helps 
uh, live the morality of the uh, area. Right. But the graffiti we're talking about is immoral, mm -hmm. uh, vulgar, mm -hmm. you know it. I yeah. mean, we people's mothers are sworn at uh, to the extent that uh, it's unacceptable. Right. In fact, our communities have now accepted that as a language. Mm. Our kids look at that as their... That's a very important point. That. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that we've now become accustomed to this, mm -hmm. the city should have changed as many years ago. They should have started dealing with that. Right. But taking into account the political situation in the Western Cape. Uh, the ruling DA here wants to see our people drunk, merry and killing each other. Mm. So those types of graffiti suits them. Mm. It suits the agenda that keep these guys busy drinking and killing each other while we rule over them. Mm. And that's the only way they're going to rule because the day our colored people in the Western Cape realize that they should be ruling the goose mm -hmm. because of the majority. Uh, they unfortunately are kept so busy in anti-social activities mm -hmm. that they don't realize that we should be ruling the goose. Okay, so the bylaw has been passed when? Last year? Uh, last year, December. Last year, December. The last year in. Wow. Okay. It was coming on for the last two years, wow. okay. but finalized. Okay. And we just couldn't get they had the numbers. As a councillor, being part of the NCC, are we contest? Are you? I shouldn't say we. My apologies. Are you as a party contesting this? We contest. You can't contest it any further. It's been passed. That's it. That's it. But what we can do mm -hmm. is act as activists. Now that's where I came in. Right. Where I put on social media that if anybody in the private property has been asked to remove those murals. Right. Please contact me, okay. because we've put in place certain legal minds right. who's going to help us pro bono for one matter, where we're going to take the city to the Equality Court right. and prove that national constitution supersedes the provincial and the local. Okay. And the, the, there's a great chance that we will ensure that that bylaw is going to be watered down and polluted. So someone took the time, someone took the effort, someone took the expenses to paint that beautiful mural. Does that person now also get into hot water? Uh, nobody has been charged. Okay. They haven't charged anybody, they just painted it over. I'm waiting for somebody to be charged, but in that case we couldn't have assisted a person. Mm. For one reason, um, it's not it's not private property, it belongs to the city, the city has a right. Yeah. But like you rightly said earlier, that why haven't you taken this action when the graffiti, the immoral graffiti that took place, yeah. why haven't you done anything about that? Why haven't you upgraded these buildings mm -hmm. that you've been charging rentals for the last 40 to 50 years? Yeah. There are fl flats that people are paying rental from 1969. Oh my gosh. And they still don't own it. Yeah. You made a very interesting statement calling uh, the Western Cape a nanny state. Um, do you want to elaborate on that? If you look at the laws that they pass here, one of the laws that I want to raise here, Lukman, is when you're on a cell phone whilst driving, mm -hmm. they confiscate your phone, and to get your phone back, you pay, I think, a thousand or two thousand there. Correct. I want to know what happens after they've confiscated your phone, and you're driving down the road, and you get a major heart attack, mm. or you meet up in an accident, and you need assistance, mm. and you need that device. That device has been confiscated. Mm. Now there, I'm sure we can bring a, an action against the city for violating a right, mm. your access to a, a handset. Okay. So the, these are some of the laws. That, you remember the law that JP passed many years ago that your dogs can't bark after 11 o'clock? Okay, How do you speak to a dog and tell a dog you can't bark, it's 11 o'clock? Mm. These are the type of laws they pass in the city. Tell them to start concentrating on the real crime mm -hmm. that affects our people, where we are getting butchered, massacred on a daily basis. Coming up to election year, 2024, a couple of months away, uh, what are we anticipating in South Africa? Uh, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, it's one be for the books, uh, because let's face it, uh, quite a few of our communities are really puzzled about who to vote for. Yeah. So what should they be looking at? It's unprecedented. It's going to be a very difficult one. You're looking at over 80 or 90 parties. Parties, correct. How do, how do people go through those scrolls and those ballot sheets to find a, 
Yeah. I old person is going to find, find, a, uh, find a bit of an issue. I mean, I'm, I think it's going to be an issue yeah. with the independents coming in. Yeah. I was talking to Zaki Ahmed this morning. He's also been uh, he's also put up his hand to, right. as a party. Uh, there are many like him that want to be on the uh, uh, ballot paper, which they have the democratic right. You can't stop anybody. Right. But uh, I think it's going to be a very challenging one. It's going to affect the two big parties. Uh, in the different provinces, I think the ANC is going to lose a huge percentage mm. from the last uh, election. Well, our turnout was not very good. The, the local government. The local one. Now, I'm talking about the national. last uh, national one and provincial one. And the same is going to happen to the DA. Mm. The DA is going to lose a chunk, a great chunk, to the smaller parties because most of our voters mm. voted the DA, mm. not the ANC. Mm. Mm. So the ANC won't have a great uh, loss. Mm -hmm. out in the Western Cape. Okay. But I can see them losing out in Tswane and all the other areas, Gauteng, yeah. uh, Free State, Pumalanga, Northwest. Okay. Well, it's going to be interesting. We'd like to invite you back to, you know, closer sure. to the time to discuss as well. National uh, activist and National Coloured Congress councillor at the uh, City of Cape Town, Brother Hanif Lunat. Jazakallah so much for coming into the studio. Always a pleasure. And uh, we hope to speak to you soon. Have a great evening. Assalamualaikum. Shukran. So there we go. That's uh, Brother Hanif uh, Luna chatting to us uh, live on uh, the coverage of the ICJ um, uh, case that's been put through by South Africa at The Hague. After the break, we chat to another local attorney and also activist around the, around the case that we witnessed today. You are still watching Hilal TV.